Okay, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today's the 16th, January 2018. And um, as you can see, it is a beautiful day. It's like 12 degrees, but it's very still. So everybody feels like, hey, this is a break. You know, this is a break. Winter's a struggle. Make no mistake about it, it's a struggle. In a lot of ways, we're lucky because our house is an old farmhouse. So we know when it's cold out. I think if we had a house that was just real tight and stayed warm all the time with just a candle going, then we'd, we wouldn't know how cold it is outside. So we're lucky. We're lucky. But um, anyway, part of the fun of doing this is knowing when you jump the shark. Yeah, I take my hood down. And we had that real warm spell uh, last week, and it did. It got up to almost 50. Downstate, it was 50 and 50 plus. Had a lot of rain, and all of our snow was gone. I'm standing right now on a, a huge puddle. You can't tell because it's covered with snow, but it, uh, there was a lot of water on the ground and a lot of mud. So it was pretty bad there for a little while, I guess. We had to hook up the electric fences again because all of a sudden these little guys start thinking um, what's on the other side of the fence is something they'd like to have, even though they had plenty in here. And, you know, we were a little worried because of the warm weather and what it can do. And then flashing back to very cold. See that, that's the uh, strings from the bale. And they, they love to play with it. And then at some point they just, they eat it. So I don't know. Been doing it for years, nothing seems to happen. So I guess it's okay. Maybe that's the key to my success is uh, feeding bale strings to pigs. But um, it's been a week, and so I come out, and I'm still looking at healthy animals. I'm looking at shiny coats, shiny noses, sparkling eyes, um, good attitudes, uh, mangalitsas, or, well, pigs in general, I guess. Um, when they're not doing well, they get humped back. They kind of, and I may have one here. There's a blonde that's not doing well. But she was not doing well before, and you just have them. You don't know why. Her right there. She's partly waddle, and she's kind of humped up and back. She's definitely younger, but here's another one right here, same age. Right? So why she is like that, I don't know. But I guess we would never even think about picking her for... Um, breeding stock and you know I in the last video I said well I don't know why this happens and I thought that's pretty lame I should be leading the way in finding out why this happens so I did a little research on it and what it is is it's a pneumonia issue they get all that moist air in their lungs and then it drops cold again and if the transition isn't gradual they can get pneumonia. So we, tr we, as the farmers, can make the transition gradual by ensuring that when the um, temperature is dropping, that they are as comfortable as possible. So we make sure that they have nice dry bedding, they have plenty of space, they're not stressed. Um, I haven't mentioned this about housing. Last year, I had problems with uh, pneumonia. I think. I'm not sure, but I lost a couple pigs and then I had some that got stunted and I had to separate them out and I never really did know what the problem was. Could have been hog chow. I took some pigs back from a guy that I had uh, given some to and then uh, he did some hog chowing. That could have been it, but I'm starting to think now that my housing situation wasn't what it could have been. I'm thinking now that's what it was. I was I'm using these half pipes. Uh, they're big oil tanks that we cut in half. I got one up there, one over there. I'm not using them this year because I had trouble with them last year. And they are ventilated, but they're not ventilated enough, I think. 
and the pigs would, you know, there'd be 40 of them in a group and they'd pile up on each other. And when they would come out in the morning, the steam would just billow out behind them. So that's a bad sign. So I decided this year what I would try is I'd put porta huts out, which I did, and I got, what, six, seven of them up there. So the pigs distribute themselves in smaller groups. And I've gotten in there and there's no moisture issues. I mean, those things are totally open on the front. I clock them so they're facing north um, because usually our relative wind comes from the southwest. And if you look at that, the corner of that, the corner that's close to us and rear shapes of, you know, a V. So when the wind hits that, it breaks it. In the aviation industry, we call that vortex generation. No, but that's the aviation industry, not pigs. So um, I've had like no problems this year, no problems. And I believe, you know, here it is the 16th. We're over the hump. We really are over the hump because now everybody's accustomed to the cold. It's just business as usual. In their little lives, they just think this is the way life is. You know, they don't remember summertime, I don't think. I don't think. Maybe they do, but they don't say anything to me about it. So we're over the hump, coming down the other side, and it's important to talk about this type of pasturing. Um, this is gonna be part of the Mangalitsa privilege, and I'm making this because we are going to need more pastured Mangalitsa pigs. And uh, it's going to take more farmers to get into it. So this is a way of kind of putting it out there that, hey, the need is there and here's how you do it. And it also, as time goes on, a couple years from now, somebody could access this information and they could use it to, to keep this going. I'm going to at some point sit down with a white board and do some cost analysis on this. <clears throat> um, we are by no means have it wired, by no means. We're just a little bit further down the road than some guys. We've definitely had the mistakes happen and work through them. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing to share those stories so other people don't have the same problems. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, going to be a break from the last series that I was doing of Return to Rule of Law. But I think with re Return to Rule of Law, we're going to see a lot of these frivolous, crazy regulations go away. Um, I hope you know that if the state of Michigan, well, entities within the state of Michigan had had their way, they would have said that, no, it's, it is not safe to raise pigs outside. <clears throat> and uh, they probably could have, you know, pushed it far enough to outlaw it. It's not. Don't even think it is. But now that we've jumped that shark as well, I think it's time for people to consider pastured pig production. Um, and so we probably should go through the numbers on it because it's, it's an ec economic gain, it's a quality gain, and it's a health gain. So bottom line, it's a good thing to do, but it's just got to be, it's got to be done right. So it's Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can farm. <laughs>